Jack Dorsey, the CEO of Twitter and Square, making a very big donation to help fight the coronavirus outbreak. Businesses are coming together to donate some much-needed COVID-19 protective supplies. He's donating up to $100 million toward coronavirus relief efforts. Welcome to a new session here at uh, this uh, democracy uh, conference. Uh, we are about to discuss um, business and uh, responsibility uh, towards protecting democracy and uh, joining important discussions about the uh, democratic uh, values. I'm about to talk uh, with uh, two uh, very high level leaders um, one here in, in our studio and uh, one connecting with us from San Francisco. So uh, if you're registered for this uh, session here for, for the conference, please join us at the virtual room and uh, put questions to us during the, uh, the talk we have here. Uh, and uh, I will try to, uh, to take it in into our uh, discussions here. So now it's a very great pleasure for me to introduce you all. Uh, to one of the most distinguished and experienced uh, CEOs in, uh, in Denmark, um, Lars Rebjørn Sørensen. Um, he is a former CEO of the uh, leading global healthcare company, uh, Novo Nordisk, um, headquartered here in Denmark, but working all over the world. Um, I think about 43,000 uh, employees and uh, uh, situated in, in, in 80 countries and uh, products uh, being sold in over uh, 170 countries. Uh, since 2018, Lars Rebjørn Sørensen has been uh, chairman of the Novo Nordic Foundation, holding the ownership and control of uh, the company Novo Nordisk. Um, Lars, you have uh, for many years uh, been um, a, a CEO very engaged in the, in the public debate. Uh, you have taken part in a um, lot of discussions uh, and a lot of your colleagues, both in Denmark and globally, uh, they, they seem to be a little bit uh, restricted uh, taking part in, in public debate um, because they, may be, um, they might be uh, afraid that it could uh, backfire um, into uh, the, the brand and the company that they represent. Uh, again, with the COVID-19, COVID uh, COVID uh, you have also been outspoken again and taking part in the public debate. Um, do you think it's, uh, it is a responsibility for, for top executives to, um, uh, to, to join the public debate and uh, make it clear what kind of uh, positions you have? Yes, th thank you, Lisbeth, and, and thanks uh, for inviting me. Uh, yeah, I do think it, it's the responsibility of top executives from private enterprises to engage in public debate. I'm, I'm really pleased that you have gotten the perception uh, that I do participate. And when, when reflecting on this uh, in preparation for, for, for our conversation, um, I realized that, that I have actually changed since I changed jobs. And this is important in this context because today I'm the chairman of a foundation um, uh, that controls uh, the enterprise, uh, but as such, uh, I don't fear any reprisals as such and can take a, a, an interest because the foundation is interested in societal issues at large. Uh, when I was CEO, uh, I mostly participated in public debates that were relevant for the enterprise. Because I realized relatively early on that, that people were, were not really interested in my personal opinions, but they were interested in the opinions expressed by the, the entity and the social impact that a company has. And, and I think that's going to be a, a key topic for our debate, how to ensure that you realize whether you're talking personally or you're talking as part of an institution. But can you be talking personally if you are a global CEO? You have represented a company that uh, is all over the world with your product. 
um, fighting um, uh, a very important disease, uh, diabetes. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think many people would ask for your opinion also about political issues. And, and when you were the global leader of Novo Nordis, could you do the same as you are doing now as chairman well, of, of a foundation? Well, I, I could do it and I did do it as it related to my key constituency, which was the people with diabetes all over the world uh, that I was trying to serve. And when, it, when I were representing them, I took there were no barriers that I wouldn't want to engage in. And, and we've tried many complicated political s situations. I mean, we've had a long-standing relationship with Cuba, mm -hmm. not to the likes uh, of, of our American friends. Uh, we've had long-standing relationship with Iran. Uh, we've done business uh, in Iraq uh, during the, the war. And, um, and we built a business, a large, large business in China. And so we seek to do business in every area where there are people that we can serve. And when, it, when it's in their interest, mm -hmm. then we engage in the political debate. But for instance, take the, 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 the very um, serious tensions now between the US and, and China. How, how to navigate in that? environment, so to speak, that uh, the business environment, uh, when you have global powers uh, like uh, US and China um, having those kind of uh, trade um, fightings and so on, uh, how can you navigate in that and, and, and still represent the, the democratic principles and the, the democratic values that we have in the, in the Western countries? Yeah, that is one of the most difficult tasks as a, as a CEO uh, because uh, the, the big powers, as they are, will use private enterprises uh, for leverage uh, when they compete uh, for uh, dominance. I mean, the debate between the United States and, and China are, are in some ways on democracy, but they are, in my view, much more on technological dominance mm. uh, for the future. And uh, so, so we end up often in the situation, if you're not for us, you are against us. And, and this is, of course, for a corporation that has interest and legitimate customers in both camps. Uh, that's a very, very difficult debate to uh, participate in. And, and at least in Denmark, we've had, and not unlike many other European states, we've had the, the division of labor. Uh, the business is doing business and the government is doing doing policy. And so uh, we've had, in, in many, many cases, uh, had a foreign policy, uh, and then we've had uh, the opportunity as businesses to interact by being present in all the local markets. Mm. And by our presence and the transference of those values that we represent, uh, we do influence uh, the perception of democracy, uh, because we will operate in China the same way within the laws of mm. the Chinese uh, territory, as we do in the United States, as we do in Europe, the values are the same, but they are articulated slightly differently mm. because of the local regulation uh, in these two major yeah. markets. Let's take the the pandemic uh, situation now about the the corona. Um, what kind of role do you think responsible business should play uh, in uh, dealing with the corona crisis? Um, is there a special role for business to take there? I certainly think there is, and, and I've experienced it firsthand uh, with all the companies that, I, that I'm engaged with. I'm on the board of a very large uh, laboratory and life science company in the United States. They stepped up very quickly, expanded the availability of tests in the United States, and were part of the task force in the United States to deal with this. Uh, we, uh, as foundation and the operating company, have helped the Danish government in building national test capacity and, and I, you, other companies are making ethanol for mm. uh, cleaning and hygiene, other companies are making uh, personal protection equipment and so I see it all over the place. There's no, it's not, it's not a political debate, everybody realizes that, that we can contribute and the beautiful thing about this is that it illuminates the example of public-private partnerships mm. going forward and I think this may be 
one of the things that may be positive about this whole ordeal is that through this, we have shown the interdependency between state and, and private enterprise and how we, we can feed on each other and how we can help each other uh, and become much stronger mm. as, a, as a result of that. If we look at the uh, democracy perception index that has been made for this uh, conference and, and uh, made public um, just uh, yesterday, um, it, is, it is obvious that if you have big trust or, or solid trust in your government, the trust in business is low. <laughs> and if you have little trust in your government, then people trust more business. What, what, what do you make of that? Well, we all need a mother. <laughs> and uh, if you have a strong state, uh, that would often take the role as our, as our common mother, protecting us when things are going very wrong. If that does not exist in a strong civil society, uh, then people will be looking elsewhere for support. Mm. It used to be historically, it used to be the tribe, it used to be the family, uh, the small group of people that uh, formed your community. Mm. Uh, I think corporations yeah. are taking a much, much larger role today than it, than it did so historically. And they should so Absolutely. also in the, in the future. Absolutely. Uh, looking at, at the, both the economic challenge and, and the uh, there's climate also, challenge. But there's also yeah. a, a balance to be struck here because, I mean, this can be all-consuming. Yeah. Uh, I mean, in my old company, the problem was not making people engaged in, in participating in solving the mission. The problem ended up being that people were so engaged mm. that they forgot about themselves and their family and civil society yeah. because everybody was so engaged in solving the problem. So th there has to be a fine balance where the company does not take over a total paternalistic role mm. of the lives of people uh, in the company. Okay. Thank you so much, Lars Rebjørn Sørensen. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you. Thanks yeah, for having me. Pleasure you. sharing um, that you would share with us your experience. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.